Welcome or welcome back. It's Alexander speaking, your host, and I do have the pleasure to present you hands-on video of the Glashütte Original CQ Diver, now in the new edition with a blue dial and a basil with a blue ceramic inlay. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. And in case you're doing this for the first time, you have the chance to win one of the Bose noise cancelling headsets each month. We're giving away one of them. Take your opportunity and win the Bose noise cancelling headsets. In 2019, Glashütte Original decided to do a remake of its Spezimatic Diver that was the first time introduced in 1969. So for the 50th anniversary, they did a remake or a replica of the diver they introduced the first time in 1969. And so please, please compare it, the Glashütte CQ, to the watch from 1969. There they are. So this is how the watch in 1969 looked like. And now let's go back to the version of 2019 or 2020 to be precise, because the one with the blue dial and the blue ceramic basil is new in the collection, but still compare the two ones. And then uh, tell me that, or com confirm me, that's the better word, confirm me please, that Gazute really stayed as authentic as possible with the redesigning of the watch. Of course, the new one you see now, or you can buy now, is much better in terms of technology, has the better movement, is more accurate, has the better case, but still it is the spirit of the Spezimatic from 1969, really uh, born in a new watch last year. There was a limited edition of 69 watches that really took also the different of the colors of the hand and the dial. So there was one limited edition of 69 pieces and an unlimited edition with a black dial. And now, for the joy of many of you, this is the new one, blue dial, a lacquered blue dial, and a basil with a blue ceramic inlay. So this is the new edition, and I do have the pleasure to present you the watch. First of all, with the uh, stainless steel bracelet, and I also do have a, um, I do have a rubber strap coming with it and a fabric strap so we can see the watch in all its facets. This new CQ Diver is really trying to be authentic. And if we look at the inscriptions or what is written on the dial, I can point out here you have a Glashütte and underneath it's written Original. And if you look back to the original watch, then you had the word Glashütte here and underneath it was written Spezimatik. Today you see here Glashütte in Saxon, that means Glashütte, that's the village, and in Saxony. And if we look back to the original watch from 1969, we had 26 rubies and the word shockproof. So everything is there. Look at the date window. The date window also at the time being had that little white surrounding, so it looked uh, like today, so it is a date window that had these white surroundings and still today it is there. A little difference of course, and this Bravo once again to Glashütte Original, of course the date disc today matches the color of that wonderful blue dial and the ceramic basil, so it is a blue date disc and no longer a white date disc. The original watch had a white date disc. But this is a no-go for me and you know this because I've been saying this quite often before in other videos, if you do remember. So then let's look at the basil, also comparing it to the old model. We can see that's the same typo. We have the same typo. And um, also on the dial we have the same typo. This six that looks a bit weird in the first moment because one says, what kind of typo is it? It is the typo of the watch from 1969. That's how the way it is. And it has been taken and brought back to the year 2019 first and now 2020 in this execution of the watch in blue. So from the side, we have a screwed crown, of course, 
and I would like to give you now some details of the case. So the diameter is 39, 39, 39.5 millimeters. The um, height of the case is 12.5 millimeters, 12.5 millimeters. And the lug to lug distance from here to here is 47 millimeters. So that's quite a comfortable watch to wear if you are looking for a smaller diver and you don't have a huge wrist. That's a perfect size, I would say. Um, we have uh, in between the lugs, uh, we have a distance of 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters and 18 millimeters when we are talking about the distance in between um, the pin buckle that I will show you a little bit later. Well, good. So um, this is the new version with the blue sun uh, ray finished lacquer dial, as I just said, and the ceramic basil. Yes, the basil is only turning counterclockwise as it has to be with a diver. Let me show you the unidirectional turning basil and please listen to the clicking, to the clicking noise of the basil. Sounds wonderful, feels wonderful. It's a very defined point. We have every 30 seconds, we have uh, a click. And so you can really precisely set to a half of minute precision. The basal, if you need to do this when you dive with the CQ. And you may dive with it because the watch is certified as a diver. So the watch is tested by Glass UT Original as a diver, equally to the testing procedure that is applied on the CQ Panorama date. There is a video. If you are keen to learn more about it, please check out our video where we show these testing procedures in an own video. So you can find it and you can really go into details. Then let me show you the stainless steel bracelet, very nice. You see there's a matte surface here, matte. We have polished surfaces here. We can, you can see me um, mirroring in there. Matte, polished matte. Um, the case is matte, it's brushed all over. So we don't have any polished surfaces. Simply the inner, the inner part of the steel bracelet is a polished surface. So now let's get to the buckle or to the folding clasp. It's not a buckle, it's a folding clasp. So you see you have two push pieces, left and right. You have to press on both of them. If you only press on one, it will not open. So only by pressing on both of them, it will open. There's a solid click when you close it. Of course, this bracelet has an adjustment for the length. Yeah, the camera zoomed in again and is showing you this. Now, do you see here? These are the possibilities to change the length. And there is a, the sign, the logo of Glass UT Original on the outer side of the clasp. And when you press on it, you can press on it. Here you see my, my finger. You can press on it and then you can adjust the length and then you can adjust the length and wait this do you see this is precisely the length that is adjustable there you go and this is done by only pressing on the logo on the logo here you have it again of the clasp. So you don't have to do big things and it's easy, especially when you wear the watch, you have it on the wrist. You don't even have to take it off the wrist. You just press on it and you then push along the bracelet a little bit and you can adjust it. And I think this is enough to um, make some changes in the length of the bracelet. Um, you have here screws. Let me try to show them to you. That's not easy. Here you go. Um, you have screws here. If you unscrew them, you are able to dismantle the bracelet in various pieces. 
there again, there again, and you can really dismantle it. And there are also screws here. Let me bring it to the camera here. You see screws, screws. You have uh, some screws here and here. It's a bit reflecting in the moment. Uh, maybe not the best position to film it. Maybe you can see it here now. You wait. Here you go. There you see. Now you have them. Okay. You see those screws? So you can really open up almost and dismantle the entire bracelet. And uh, if you want to do some micro adjustments or perfect fittings for your wrist, you just unscrew it and then you are able to really dismantle it and reassemble it. And then you come to the desired length. You see here, there's a screw again in the center. And this really enables you to really perfectly, perfectly make or ma uh, find the perfect position for you on your wrist. And then this um, bracelet will really look good and fit perfectly. So now, haha, ha, we come to a point that has been discussed a lot already up front of the video. The fact that Gazute Originalis has not a see-through case. Ah, my goodness. Um, now, yes, I do understand all the critics and I do understand all of you who want, of course, to see the 39-11 uh, caliber and they say okay Glashütte uh, invests a lot in the decoration of the movement and does a lot for making um, the movement look really good. Exclusively finished movements, skeletonized rotor, beveled edges, uh, polished steel parts, polished screws, uh, Glashütte stripe finish, a swan neck, fine adjustment and so on and so on and so on and so on. Yes, but to stay authentic to stay authentic with the original watch from 1969. They decided not to show the movement, but to stay authentic. And there you go. You have a, a case bottom mounted uh, with a threaded bottom ring with the textile strap. You can see this very nice. You see Dean 8306. 20 bars made in Germany. Very nice. So people don't tell me that this isn't a nice case back and perfectly aligned. Do you know how many of those case backs are not aligned? Oh, come on. Perfectly aligned. Can you see this? It's perfectly aligned. So Glashütte is at 12 o'clock. Made in Germany stands or is written at 6 o'clock and it's perfectly aligned. And that's not a coincidence. That's German engineering made to be like this. And I have to say, even some of you would have liked to see the movement in this case. Please excuse the designers. Please excuse the team of Glasio Turgenar for not showing you it, but to stay authentic. And I assume in the next edition or maybe in another in, in, in the next upcoming design um, evolution of uh, the uh, CQ, this might be an option, but if you are talking about this CQ, the uh, replica of the watch from 1969, it is not supposed to be there. And yes, we have to take it as it is. So at this appointment, I know, um, and yeah, but something I can't change. Then what else can I show you? Yeah, of course, this, look at this is a really screw down crown. There you go. You can see it clearly now. And in the second position, I will stop the movement and then I can adjust the hands and I will just bring it back to the position of smile. And I do also want to show you how the date change is happening. Some of you do always request me to show this. We have the 21st indicated here and I'm at six o'clock in the evening now. And I'm turning the watch towards midnight. There we go. And then we will see precisely um, the date change. Watch now uh, the 21st in the date window, please. And uh, the minute hand approaching midnight. So, couple of minutes after midnight, we saw the date changing to the 22nd. We can quickly do this once again by moving the hands forward. Um, this is noon, now two o'clock, three o'clock and so on. And then we come back again. So if you missed it the first time, I go it again for you attention. So we see moving 
2030. That's the date change. I will bring the hands back to their 10 past 10 position to make the watch smile at you. There we go. And you clearly see that's a screw down crown with uh, several gaskets, of course, guaranteeing the waterproofness of the watch. You're screwing it. It's a very solid crown, by the way. There is no shaking or moving when you, when you have opened it. It's really solid German engineering. And this is what makes this watch so nice for me. So from the side, I don't, I would like to show you the watch from the side. By the way, the sapphire crystal is anti has an anti-reflective anti -reflective treatment on both sides. So it's treated on both sides. So almost no uh, mirroring in there, but you can nicely see the watch from the side. How it looks like. There you go. 12.5 millimeters the height and also from this side let me show it we can nicely see the glass with the original logo being uh, shown on the crown and then you can see but another thing look something i really like look at that little detail um matte and polished surface a matte here matte surface polished surface even on the crown. That's really, I would say, being in love with details and really manufacturing a watch that really surprises you when you are wearing it. Okay, that's the first thing I want to show. Now I will swap and put on a textile um, strap and show you the watch, how it looks with it. Before showing you the watch with the synthetic or fabric strap, I want to show you the bracelet. I've just been dismantling it, uh, taking out the spring bars on both sides so we can see that really beautifully executed bracelet. Very nice. The fine adjustments of eight positions here. I will quickly show this again. No, you can better. Now we can see it easily sliding. There you go. Nicely made, beautifully made and also something I want to of course mention is that to cover when it is mounted you of course have a part here that is covering this little edge here that you don't have. Look that that's also part of it and this is the end here this end part and it comes in here and makes a wonderful um, look so that you don't see a difference in between the case and the bracelet looks like it was integrated, fully integrated. Okay, so now we are going to put on this uh, fabric or textile or synthetic strap. That's a blue one with a pin buckle. That's one of the uh, options you have. Um, synthetic here or if you like that's not a choice I would do there's a black rubber coming with it a black rubber strap with a folding clasp with a folding clasp and this is also something I am not very keen of this is too fragile in terms not in terms of make but in terms of operating it I don't like these folding clasps that open on both sides, it's always a little bit a shaky thing when you operate them and you are using them now. My glove got stuck in it and um, I'm not a big fan of them, but this is, you know, tastes are different and everybody has his own um, favorite way of wearing a watch. But this is also a possibility to wear the watch with this folding clasp here. You have to close one side and then you close the second side. There you go click and then you have it. That's an op that's a possibility. Looks like a little bit like the original strap that uh, was on the watch in 1969. The tropic strap as we called them at the time being. Black and blue, not my favorite combination. So I, I, but that's me, I would wear the watch with the fabric. 
this one that's perfect in blue looks gorgeous i will then put it on and before i do this i will just quickly show the watch head as you call it that's the watch head that's the watch head and now i can show the case back once again in perfect in a perfect way and you can see me here hello that's me and you can see the watch from all sides I'm that's the class you two original CQ rip the replica of the watch from 1969 and when I come back I will have the fabric step on case back once again and yes I know all of you seeing this video now saying why don't I see the movement well, it is how it is so this is now the CQ with the fabric strap I've just been um, changing those very easy if you have a little bit of experience that's no big deal no reason to go to a watchmaker you can easily learn to do this uh, to take those spring bars out in between here and then to fit them back in again that's not a big deal so the spring bars keep in between the lugs keep the strap fixed and those spring bars they look like this this is a spring bar you see they have a spring in there you can if you push them and that's the little spring bar you just have to find the two holes and then the spring will fix the strap but if you want to take them out you use a tooling like a bonsai fork this is what you need to change it uh, what you do is uh, you get in there and then you just wait up bring it back and then you just press and you see this is the move and you see this this is the move what you do in between the lugs and then the spring bar will open up and you just can take it out so that's no big deal you don't have to be a engineer neither a professor nor a watchmaker with a little bit of experience you're able to do this yourself and then you can easily exchange those straps you can e you see the spring bars are preset in there they were pretty nice at Klaus Hütte, and so it's easy so this is how the watch looks and now please watch the wrist shots and whilst you are watching the wrist shots I will start right away wrist shot with the fabric strap first time also underwater or in the water um, I've been going into a pool to show you how the watch looks like when it comes out of the water and whilst you are watching those pictures uh, with the fabric strap with the rubber strap and with the bracelet I will give you some information about the Dean uh, 8306 or ISO 6425 for divers watches the um, Glashütte original is testing the watches upon both so they are combining both tests and um, it's a choice of the more demanding criterion so the first thing is visibility then you have a test uh, dealing with the rate performance the magnetic resistance the shock resistance the resistance of the attachments the resistance at air over and under pressure a mass flow rate of air resistance of water over pressure followed by condens a condensation test salt water resistance rotating basal protection against un against unintentional read adjusting security of functional devices the entire security of all the functional devices and of course a temperature cycling so this is are all the tests um, the CQ you see now on the various uh, on various um, lighting and various uh, conditions water and not water on my wrist with the different uh, straps and the one bracelet you can wear it with and whilst I was showing you uh, or I'm showing you those pictures I was um, uh, giving you an impression of what this watch is tested so it's really uh, uh, testing that goes not so it's not a superficial testing but really German like engineering like and tough testing so you really get value for the money and you really get a watch you can rely on so <laughs> back in the studio <laughs> back in the studio this is the watch with the synthetic or the fabric step 
back in the studio. Yes, I hope you had uh, fun seeing the watch under those different conditions. Um, I have also the intention to show you by setting the watch. I will again set it back because I like when the watch smiles at you. Um, I will also do a test by um, charging the Super Luminova that they have been applying on the dial, on the hands of course, um, the indexes and the numbers. That will be a nice night shot or dark shot, but it, it is, has been done to be as close to the original. And if you look again, please, and there it is. And you see also on the basal of the original watch, you can see the triangle there. And they stayed really close and really faithful to the original Glashütte Spezimatik from 1969. This is the CQ 12 of 2020 in blue with a blue dial. A very nice watch. Unfortunately, without the see-through case back, but this will be probably part of Another edition in the next years. I very much like this fully aligned um, case pack though. So for me, that's not a deal breaker at all. In contrary, I really like it. And yo, this is what it is. I uh, uh, think I told you almost everything about uh, the watch. Uh, of course, the 3911 caliber that is used, uh, the um, uh, the oscillating frequency is 28800, so it's a 4 hertz movement. Um, yes, there is only 40 hours of power reserve. This is something else people have been talking about. I wouldn't say that this is a real disadvantage because anyhow, such a beautiful watch has to be in or on in its natural habitat. Uh, and what? Big question, the quiz question of that video. The natural habitat of the Glacier Original CQ is what? Yes, it is the wrist. So the watch has to be on the wrist. And when you wear it, the automatic winding system, the rotor will anyhow wind the watch. So 40 hours are enough. And if you are okay putting it away, then it's not a big deal. Come on, guys. You unscrew the crown and then you wind it. It's a very solid and nice thing to wind the watch. It's, I always say, and I said this once in a television interview many years ago, winding a watch in the morning is like having sex with it. And I do stick to what I said years ago. So it's really a very personal moment when you wind your watch. That's nothing difficult and nothing that is a flaw, I would say. So it's really a nice thing to do. Then you push the crown again and you wind it, uh, you close it since it's a screw down crown and the watch is ready to go again. That's no big deal, people. 40 hours. Okay, could be more, but due to the size of the movement and the construction of the movement, in this case, it's not possible. Anyhow, maybe there will be a 3911-2 once and this will have more power reserve, not in this one. So thank you very much. Now, finally, thank you very much for watching the video. I'm happy that I was able to show you the um, CQ once again. Oh, is it beautiful? So beautiful. I love the watch. I'm really falling it up. And this size with uh, 39.5 millimeters is really a size uh, where I would say, yeah, that's a size that is already also good for me because normally I tend to wear watches 40, 42 millimeters, but the 39.5, yes, 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 yes. Very nice one. Okay, thanks for watching. Comments are welcome. Um, everything, questions, comments, go ahead, have fun. I will be answering them, of course, as always. And thanks for watching and thanks for enjoying the video of the Glashütte Original CQ in the beautiful blue sunray lacquer dye with the ceramic, blue ceramic uh, inlay and the stainless steel basal. Bye bye for now.